everyone, I'm Bardo, founder and creative director of House of Nyabingi, and welcome to Rap and Chat, your moment in the month where the creative culture meet for conversation, preferably with a glass of Caribbean spiced rum and a dash of pims and a healthy side of fried plantain. So let's get into it and don't forget to click, subscribe and leave your comments below. Our guest this month is Matthew Gordon, who releases music under the name Pi Eye Collective and resides in London, UK. Welcome, Matthew. Hi. Hi, Bardo. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm not too bad. How are you keeping on this lovely day? I'm doing quite well, thank you. I'm okay. (laughs) Wonderful. As usual, we are going to start off with our quick fire round. And then, Matthew, you can tell us more about yourself and Pi Eye Collective, what you do, how you do it, and I guess what inspires you, what are your top tips for our audience if they want to get into the music industry? You've got one minute to answer these questions as quick as possible, starting now. Favourite genre of music? Jazz. Fave album? In a Silent Way by Miles Davis. Miles Davis, very bougie. Favourite song? Wichita Lion Man by Glenn Campbell. Ooh, I say. Now, favourite day of the week and why? I don't actually have one. Oh, oh well, that's good for you. Mine, I think, is Friday. <laughs> uh, favourite cartoon or cartoon character? Uh, Batman. Okay. Fried plantain or fried dumpling? Dumpling. Oh, you're a dumpling man. I see. You're the first dumpling man I've ever met. Ghanaian <laughs> or Nigerian jollof rice? Oh, <laughs> Ghanaian. <laughs> Go on in, Nigerian family, please, please just look after yourselves, calm down, we don't want no wars. All right, rice and peas or plain rice? Rice and peas. Rice and peas, okay, and we've got a few seconds left, Guinness punch or sorrel? Sorrel. Aye, yeah, 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 woo, woo, woo. I thank you, that is your quick fire round, over and done with. We may have new friends, you may have created some enemies with that uh, Ghanaian selection there, but <laughs> <laughs> keep that one quiet. So who, if anyone, was your greatest inspiration growing up, family member or other? Greatest inspiration growing up would be my parents. Mm-hmm. Um, reason being, um, they're a classic example of where constant hard work will get you. Because like a lot of second generation immigrant families, they worked from pretty much nothing. Tell me about the three most influential people in your life and how they impacted you. And it can be at any age. Mm. Alive or dead, actually, mm. if there's anybody that's passed on. Sure. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a bit cheeky with this one. I'm going to roll my parents into one person. Okay. So I can then... <laughs> that, that's fair it. enough. I'm, I'm sure they'll be pleased that they've, they've been on the list. <laughs> um, so, yeah, parents are, are one for the reasons given earlier. Okay. The other person would be um, my grandmother, who um, is no longer with us. Um, Just another perfect example of a solid human being. Okay. Yeah, just just great in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, my partner, who is an an incredibly huge inspiration for me. And also, you know, as all good partners should be, a source of support and Mm. family and that kind of thing. One of my big inspirations is one of my big inspirations is the people I come from. So I mentioned earlier that my most recent family history is from Jamaica. Now, when you look at there are reasons for this, and a lot of people, I guess people who listen to this podcast will be aware of those reasons, but there's a there's a very marked tendency for the achievements of melanated people to be downplayed yes um so what i'm referring to is particularly uh dub music in jamaica that stuff was made by geniuses Mm. and it's not it's not widely acknowledged i mean it is if you're in a dub community obviously you know what's going on but outside of that people just kind of hear the music and just take it for granted yeah Whereas how you need to think about it is that those sounds had never been heard before. And those guys that were making that stuff were all 
incredibly intelligent because you need to be because okay so take one example for instance when like the kind of giants of that field king tubby king tubby wasn't actually a musician he was an engineer mm. and he made radios yeah. and not radio what service radios and lots of el- electronic equipment just to give people a kind of a, a an idea into the mind you need to do that if you want to be like wiring electrical equipment you you need to know some like pre-advanced mathematics yeah and you need to like to like to yeah to uh to a higher than average level because a lot of those sounds that those dub guys are coming out with it was all equipment they were making themselves in their living rooms yeah because they had the mathematical and scientific knowledge to do it wasn't an accident but and leading back to what you say about it wasn't an accident, it also feels as though it was an imprint from the ancestors that's been handed down. Because if you think the peoples in the continent of Africa, before slavery, mm. we had our own religions, gods, our own music, musicians, architects, bakers, you know, we had our own everything. And then imagine those people are then removed from their homeland and their society and what they know into another part of the world, becoming enslaved people, that architect doesn't stop being an architect overnight. He's still got that understanding, like you said, of the mathematics. Those teachers didn't stop becoming teachers. So that knowledge and information does get handed down in the same way we talk about muscle memory with sprinters, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with the Caribbean sprinters. You know, that muscle memory, it's part of the DNA it just means that we've got a collective of, like you say, musicians here with dub that's been able to translate almost that sonic hieroglyphics and the mathematics into instruments and put audio onto it that the rest of us can hear, which to us, it sounds familiar and part of family, but to others, it's like, what's, what the hell is that? I've never heard that before. Mm. Well, I mean, yeah, the, even, yeah, the idea that you take a, vo- take a song and drop out the vocal and yeah. some of the instruments. That's yeah. it's like do you know what it's like? It's like Shakespeare. Yes. Where in a lot of the stories that Shakespeare came up with, we all think, oh, that, that's no, no, no. He was the you know, he people think that those things have been around forever. It's like, no, he was someone had to come up with it first time. Yes. And that, that was the guy that did that. Yes. Whereas, yeah, you know, manipulate, you know, putting like an effect on the guitars that goes, chan, 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 chan. like that wasn't <laughs> no one had done that. <laughs> also, another uh, thing to mention as well. It's just the, the strength of the people I'm from. Even if those guys weren't descended from scientists and mathematicians, if you think of like how they're... So someone like King Tubby, think of like uh, how old he was. His like almost direct descendants, or not descendants, sorry, direct ancestors would have, would have been enslaved, mm. right? Which means that within like a generation or two, that guy's gotten himself back up to the highest, you know, like the height of exactly of in, uh, you know knowledge and intelligence. Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty f- profound. Did you have a mentor through your evolution, and if so, what was so great about them? I've had I've had a number of mentors. Okay, who was um, your fave, if any? Don't think I have a favourite. I mean, because they're all they all were. Brought something to the table. Yeah, they're all, yeah, they're all, and it's 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 been a combination of teachers that I've had, uh, university and school. Yeah, and also, I remember like so when I was younger, I played a lot in church. Yeah, and there was a, a musician there who, yeah, just really helped me figure out a lot of what I was trying to achieve with music. Mm. And also, you know, it was giving me kind of because he played bass, I played piano. So for those of you who know, you know, know about music theory, the bass line is, is very important. Yeah. So he was kind of just, you know, just showing me some, just showing me things every now and again. And it's like really simple things, but very profound things. On Like he was the first person to tell me, like, if, if, ever in, if you're in a band and you're in doubt of what to play, just play the melody. Um, and that was like, that, at the age that he told me, that was indispensable advice. It's like, oh, wow, that's incredible. Even the bass line. He's like, yeah. So everyone play the melody in this <laughs> so yeah okay and you know it's really nice to sit and be able to speak to an artist who's come through the church pathway because you find mm. that that was a very big thing obviously 40s 50s 60s 70s 80s even the 90s mm. now you're not finding that so much and it it comes back to something you're saying about it it's underpinning 
and giving you a foundation of knowledge that, you know, TikTok stars or your, you know, your, um, your ready-made manufacturer stars of your TV music shows, they don't have. Mm. You know, and I think that's why sometimes the music, when you're hearing it, it's not holding you and having the gravitas in the way music previously, previous albums were constructed because it's almost like it's not nourishing the soul because a specific foundation isn't actually there, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's. I, so I put that down to um, just having practical experience with yeah. music in the wild. Yeah, yeah, in the wild. I like that. Um, I like that. Yeah. And it's not for me. It's not so much the church environment that's the the issue. It's just the fact that it's using music realistically, yeah, for the purpose it was intended to be used, which is not for, which is not as a product to be sold, yeah, but as you know, something a bit more metaphysical. Us both being creative people works quite well for us. I don't think it would work for everybody because mm-hmm. there may be. You know, unfortunately, there may be some like competition, I given think. that you're both like competing for the same audience or the same dollar, let's say. I see. But no, in our case, it's all, it's all very supportive and kind of works in, in the best way possible. Yeah. We understand like the the lifestyle kind of challenges and okay. that sort of thing. You know. To get more updates on when the next rap and chat will be out. Don't forget to click subscribe and leave your comments for us below. Matthew, please tell the audience about your personal evolution within the music industry. So going from, I guess, school, have you always known that you wanted to do music? And if so, how did you find the pathways to get into the industry? What support was there for you to now being... Pi I, releasing music as Pi I Collective, your first, I believe you had a performance towards the end of last year, your first concert performance at the world-renowned Jazz Cafe in <laughs> North London. Yeah, so, so tell us about that, that evolution. I'm, I'm sure the audience would love to hear about that. So I've not always wanted to be a musician. I started to become very fascinated with music as a teenager. Before then things that I wanted to be included, astronaut, architect. Wow, okay. Or or scientist. Okay. Let's just say physicist, actually. Yeah. And yeah, it wasn't until my mid to late teens that I felt like kind of a switch had been flicked because uh, I started listening to Jimi Hendrix. Okay. And yeah, his music kind of flicked a switch in my brain and I just seemingly suddenly started to think oh, I could I want to do this mm-hmm. um and it wasn't so much thinking in terms of career it was just thinking I this is what I want to explore for the rest of my life you know? sure. okay. I just want to be involved with this and then so my way into it was actually into music has been academic right um because that's what that's just you know that's what made the most amount of sense to me when I was in it, it was I was quite good at school. Yeah. So it just made sense to me to stay on that pathway. And also it's a generational thing as well in that people of my generation, are, school was heavily sold. Yes. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I, yeah, like I said, late teens started to become very interested in music. Then thought, oh, I can study this at A level. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can study this at degree level. Oh, I can say this at maths level. So I just kept, I just kept studying. And oh, um, and just out of curiosity, um, where did you go to school? Was that in London or somewhere else? Oh, right. So went to school in Bristol. Okay, uh, which is um, the southwest of the United Kingdom for our international listeners. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bristol, uh, Saint Mary Redcliffe and Temple School okay. uh, in Bristol. And then I did an undergrad undergraduate degree in music at Oxford Brookes University. Wow, okay. And then I did a master's in composition at Trinity. Trinity uh, College. Trinity College or Trinity Conservatoire. Okay. So Matt, please tell us more about your album Salvation, which for the audience out there you can find on Spotify and many other streaming services. Please take it away. Yeah, from my debut album, which is called Salvation, did it all myself. 
well, about you know ninety something percent myself. There's a track there I wrote. One I wrote with a friend of mine called Hector Plimmer, and another one features vocal by a friend of mine who records under the name Metashiba. And you can find out about both of them on the socials and all of that. Mostly, mostly on my own, made in my living room. I say the album actually took me quite a while to write, not to write to get together, because the music was unfamiliar to me. So what I mean by that is. The music didn't just suddenly appear. I had to. I had to work it out. Okay. Um, and for those of you that listen, it, there's probably some things about it which seem a bit unfamiliar. And I, I had to work those out too. I mean, I mean, I'm a, I'm a proponent of the idea that creative people are conduits. Mm-hmm. I had to figure out what the, all these ideas were, because I couldn't hear a lot of this stuff around me. So I had to put, yeah, to put a lot of work in just to, like I was saying earlier, hear my own thoughts sure, and hear what this music actually was. Other than all the music I've ever listened to and liked, the inspiration for the album is myself. Myself, my journey through life. Uh, I mean, that's, if the album is quote unquote about anything, it's about that. And the titles are reflective of that. The titles are all issues that I, deal or have dealt with like directly Mm -hmm. so for instance there's a track on there called uh yandra which combines you know the idea there of that title is combining my interest in ancient religions or religion in general and also mathematics google yandra if you want to find out about that and the the track you mentioned gratitude Uh, so i actually i actually wrote that in 2020 okay during the first lockdown Mm -hmm. I, I wrote it because I felt grateful because I felt like I, under, I had an understanding of the severity of COVID back, you know, if we look at the numbers of, of COVID back in 2020, it almost seems like there was no problem, but I felt like I understood the severity of the problem then. Sure. And I was grateful that I was able to stay in my house. I was able to stay with my partner. I had, yeah. you know, I had food to eat. Mm. And I feel like I was able to put that emotion into sound. Mm-hmm. So, if the music makes you feel anything, I hope that the music instills in you like this uh, a feeling of feeling grateful or gratitude or uplifting or gratefulness, any of that kind of stuff. In, in so much as, yeah, a musician can trigger certain emotions with their music, I, I hope that that's what that track does. Brilliant. Thank you. To get more updates on when the next Rap and Chat will be out, Don't forget to click subscribe and leave your comments for us below. So I want to open up your mind a bit. What do you think the creative world, as in the music industry, if we think back where we are now, January 2022, Hmm. looking back the last 50 years of music, what we've had, what if you think about what we've listened to, how things have changed in the industry, what do you think the next 50 years might look like or feel like or even sound like? It's a hard one. I wouldn't really want to say what it would look like. What it would, I wouldn't want to say what it would sound like. Yeah. I think, the, because I think that's not as interesting a question as how we're going to consume music. Yeah. Going to, or what that's going to look like. I think that's going to be more the interesting thing. Because, and that, that will influence what it sounds like as well like for instance what what i mean by that is you look at streaming services and look at how money is paid out with spotify for instance Mm. a fee is only accrued for a stream if it's listened to past 30 seconds so you what you have now is a lot of artists trying to make sure that the song is like hitting within the first 30 seconds. Yeah. So that people don't skip it. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, you know, because the, the, how it's, how the music is consumed, changing the way it's made. Because I think, I don't, I sh- this isn't really a thing. It's just, it's actually a fact. If you do your research that there, there is no new music. Everything just keeps getting recycled, which I think is the beautiful thing about it actually. Okay. We just keep finding new ways to, to reinterpret all the stuff we've got, you know, we've got the, all the pitches already exist, all the mm-hmm. ways of, comb- you know, combining them are um, actually scratched up. 
yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to look at music technology um, because, yeah, the next 50 years of technological innovation are going to, are going to be in, incredible. Um, we're going to see more technological change in the next 50 years or as much in the next 50 years as we have in the past 100, you know, if not okay. more, because that kind of thing always speeds up. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I think it's probably fair, um, unless you've got a, a foot in like the emerging technology world, it's probably a bit unpredictable, actually, what's going to happen next. Okay. Um, there's probably someone in a in a lab somewhere who's working on like some, yeah, some new technology, which is going to change the way we all listen to music. But I don't know about this. Also, I, also, I think, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to make a prediction here. I'm just going to say it's going to be interesting to see what happens with how music is made as well. Okay. Given that, again, technologically and in terms of the economy, the average workforce behind a piece of music has been shrinking. Whereas, you know, think of, uh, okay, so the last 50 years, put out a song in, a song, a record, whatever, in 1972, and there's at least, you know, there's a good, like, half a dozen people involved in the making of that. Sure. Inclu you know, so there's the bands, there's the engineer, there's the producer, yeah. there's the a and &R, there's the artwork people, there's, uh, you know what I mean? There's yeah. all, all those jobs have just consistently over the past few, 50 years been whittled down. Right. Um, so I think, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, like, just how many people it takes to make a record, uh, given now that AI technology is getting very, very good. It's still, it's still at infant stages, but... Um, yeah, the ability for a computer just to spontaneously generate an original piece of music yeah. that people will listen to and accept yeah. is rapidly becoming a thing. I so, see. I yeah. see. What would be the title of a book about you if your worst enemy wrote it? He didn't talk to me, probably. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't talk to me. All right, there we go. That's that one. If you could be remembered for one thing, what would it be and why? Uh, I'd like to be remembered for, well, personally, for being honest and always giving people what I think to be the truth. And creatively, I mean, I, I put a lot of effort into the music I make, so I would like to be remembered for my work. Matthew Gordon, thank you so much. This has been your Rap and Chat. Thank you and look after yourself. Yeah, thank you, Bardo. Thank you to everyone listening. You're most welcome. Thank you. <laughs>